Right there. I mean, you're better off sitting here with one well in shot. about to push. Maneuver's about to push.
So my platoon was tasked with screening uh, or conducting a screening mission at Fort Hunter Liggett, uh, essentially observing and reporting um, on enemy movements in the area. Uh, we were tasked to go up against an enemy mechanized armor company and essentially report back what we saw and uh, kind of, uh, you know, survey the area, uh, if you will, to and pass that information along back to the battalion. So the small UAS operators uh, being, you know, integrated into the platoon was a huge uh, help. And, it, you know, I, I don't really see how we could have achieved our mission without the use of them. Or, you know, it would have made the mission success significantly harder. Um, you know, and within minutes, you can begin surveying an entire area uh, looking down avenues of approach uh, for any kind of enemy movement. You can record, uh, you know, areas of interest and upon your return, you know, give that real-time information to, uh, you know, that, that next echelon leader for them to be able to make a more informed decision about, uh, you know, flowing in follow-on forces or it really just gives you a better situational awareness about what's going on within your battle space so uh, I, I can't credit them enough for you know the capabilities that they bring to the platoon yeah so uh, within my platoon we have three staff sergeants very capable staff sergeants who you know have a significant amount of experience under their belt so compared to a, a traditional rifle platoon um, you know, they are able to kind of do things a little bit more decentralized. Um, you know, I, I trust them to push out further and uh, with a significant more amount of commander's intent and, you know, less detailed instruction uh, for them to, you know, essentially own their part of the battle space. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't think we could have covered as much ground as we did if I didn't have those senior leaders in the, the positions that they, uh, they were at. I think this was probably one of the most, uh, this was definitely the first uh, force design exercise that we were operating in such a distributed manner. You know, before we were working in a distributed manner, but it was a little bit smaller scale. So I think this really put to the test how well we were, you know, we'll be able to operate in the future for, uh, you know, working so far apart from each other and kind of put the platoon commanders um, at a greater challenge of, you know, vice what they would normally face in a normal 
uh, rifle company, uh, you know, platoon commanders and platoon sergeants and squad leaders are being tasked with things that can affect, uh, you know, strategic level uh, operations. So I think it was um, a really good opportunity to kind of put everything that we've been doing during this work up together and see where we were at and see where we need to improve upon and see the things that we did well and build upon those as well. So, um, yeah, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. WTI is weapons and tactics instructor course and essentially they're training um, to create experts in air and ground tactics. This strip map iteration's biggest difference is obviously the terrain, um, but on top of that, there's uh, more stress on the command elements because they're operating in such big um, distances between the companies. And at my level, the squad level, the biggest difference is probably tactics between training in the desert and training where we're used to training in the woods. The ranges here in Yuma are uh, more enabling for larger assets, um, especially on squad ranges. For example, here we did a squad range and we implemented 81 millimeter mortars and 50 caliber machine guns um, into our squad range, whereas in Lejeune, it's unlikely that we get that opportunity. Um, it seems like WTI and strip map kind of bounce off of each other in the sense that they are getting to use us um, for their training and logistically picking up units and moving them. Um, and for us, it's good training in the sense that we're getting a lot of air time and we're spreading out over larger distances, which is essentially what the... Um, the commander's intent is for this force design in 2030.